Hello guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the Dog General Photoshop action. So the way that the action works is you open your photo, you simply fill in your side with a color and just play the action. And here is the effect that the action creates. As you can see what the action does, the action will create this Dog General uh, Photoshop effect and the action will add this uniform. So the uniform is fully layered and you can change the color of any single part of the uniform. So there are over 20 layers that you can use to differently colorize any of these parts to create the unique look. And also the metal here can be replaced so you can add your own shape or design here using just a single click with the smart object. And as you can see there is the uh, background photo in the background and you can easily replace the photo to add any photo that you like. And the whole effect is fully layered so there is a lot of options for customizing the results. And you can also change the overall color easily i'm going to show you how to do that as well and as you can see the action has a lot of textures and it also has this uh, painting effect so the painting effect is optional you can run the action to add the painting effect or you can just leave the effect without the painting that's your choice all right so just close these two windows now so after you open up your photo before you start using the action there are just a few things you should check just to make sure that the action around without any errors so the first thing you should check is that your photo is a background layer so it should be called background and you should have this little lock icon and if you have something like this or anything else you just go to the layer new and choose the background from layer and this step will turn your layer into the background layer if it wasn't then click on this menu icon over here and choose the panel options so make sure that you got this option here the add copy the copy layer is a group checked then go to the image mode and make sure your photo is the RGB color mode 8 bit kennel. And you can also check the image size from here. So, for best results, you should use the images that are around from 25 to 4500 pixels wide or high. Right? So, I'm just going to drop down the image height a little bit, something like this, because I'm going to expand the canvas. Right? So, I'm just going to choose. Okay. Right? So, what I want to do is I want to expand the canvas so I have more space around the subject. And remember, it's always better that you have more space around this subject because you can easily crop the image later, right? So to expand the canvas, you go to the image and choose canvas size, all right? And now here you can check the relative option if you want. And I'm going to first add the uh, more space here at the left side, so I'm just going to click here. So I'm now choosing that I want to expand the canvas in this direction, so I'm going to expand it on the left. And I'm just going to set the width to something like 225, which is okay, all right? And I'm going to go to the image canvas size again. This time I'm going to click here to expand the canvas at the right side. And I'm going to add something like 225 pixels. All right. And I'm going to add more space here at the bottom. So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to increase the height for 565 pixels, just like that. So you can just expand the canvas to have more space and then easily crop the image later on. Right, and what you can also do is to firstly expand the canvas and then go to the image, image size and correct image size if you like. You don't want to have two large images over 5000 pixels that's going to slow down the action performance. You can still use the action, the action is going to work, but it's going to work uh, slowly. So you can expand the canvas, then go back to the image size and see if your image size is too large, you can just drop it down. Now we're going to load the asset, so you go to the window, actions, click on this menu icon over here, choose load actions. And now here just select the action that came with download, choose load, and the action folder will appear here in your actions panel. When you open the folder, you'll find four actions here. So we got the dog general action, we got the painting action to add the painting effect, and we got these two updating actions. So we're gonna talk about them later. And what you need to do also is to load the brushes and patterns. So how to do that? You can just hit B and keyboard to select the brush tool, right click anywhere inside the canvas, click on this gear icon and choose import brushes. And here just select the uh, dog general brushes file that came with download, you choose load and all the brushes will appear here in the folder. And you can then just select the pattern stamp tool from here, click on the menu icon over here, on the gear icon and choose import patterns. And select the patterns file that came with download, you choose load and the patterns folder will appear here in the patterns panel as well. So all you have to do now is to just go to the layer, new layer to create a new layer. I name this layer brush and it's very important that you spell this correctly so all letters lowercase because otherwise the action won't work and choose ok and now when you have this layer selected all you have to do is to pick a brush tool you pick a soft brush 
set the wrong color to any color that you like and simply brush over your subject. All right, just like that. And what you can also do, if it's easier for you, is to make a selection of the subject and then fill that selection with a color. So that's what I'm going to do in this example. So in that case, what you need to do is to select the background layer first. And I'm going to go to the select. I'm going to choose subject to make an automatic selection of the subject. And this usually works pretty good, right? So if there are any selections that are not made properly, so what you can do is you can choose the quick selection tool from here. And then you can just use the shift and alt buttons or uh, shift and option buttons for a Mac to simply add or subtract some areas from the selection. Right, so just gonna hold shift and click here to add this area to the selection as well, just like that. And what you can do then is you can go to the select, modify, smooth, to smooth a little bit these edges and just gonna use the sample radius of two pixels, right? And you can also go to the select, select the mask, and here you can check the refine hair option, right? Depending on the dog's hair, if it's longer sometimes without this option, you won't have a proper selection. So you can just click there. And then if needed, you can increase the contrast, something like 30% if any areas are subtracted from the selection. All right, so you can experiment with that. Choose OK. And now you select the brush layer. This is very important. And while the brush layer is selected, you go to the edit, fill, and just choose here the foreground color. So you fill the selection and you press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. All right, that's it. So it's important that you have this color fill on the brush layer. It doesn't matter if you brush or fill the selection, just make sure you have this color fill on the brush layer. All right, so all you have to do now is just select the dog general action and click play. All right, so, and here we get a message. It says, in next pop-up window, choose the uniform perspective PSD file of your choice and click open. Choose continue to proceed. So choose continue. And what you're gonna find here is Uniform front, left, and right perspectives. So depending on from which angle your photo is taken, you can choose here the uniform to better suit to the subject. So in this case, I'm just gonna use the front uniform as the photo is taken from the front and just gonna choose open. And here you got a message. So what you have to do here is to choose stop. And then while the move tool is selected, you just click here and hold and drag this file to your photo document. And now you can just close down this file if you want it farther. And what you need to do now is to press Ctrl or Command T on your keyboard to transform this layer. And then position it to suit your subject, right? So we're just gonna position it like this. Alright. So after you position it as you like, you click on the check icon here. Alright. So you can try to match these inner edges here or the outer edges, doesn't matter. You can just use the layer mask to make it look uh, perfect. So after you place it, you select the layer mask with the uniform layer, choose the brush tool, then pick a salt brush. And now if you wish to remove any part of the uniform, you simply brush with a black color. And what you have to do then is to select the layer mask of the subject layer. And then you can use the hard brush in this case. You set foreground color to black and you simply brush over any parts that are exceeding the uniform here. So I'm just gonna brush like that. All right. Just like that. And all you have to do now is to just Click play again and yes, we continue to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten the video here and I'm going to get back as soon as the action is finished. And then I'm going to go through all the layers to show you how can you customize the results that you get. All right, so the action here just finished. So I'm just gonna close down this action panel for now. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to expand a little bit this layers panel. So the first thing that you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just quickly close down all these folders. So how can you do that is to hold Ctrl and Down buttons for PC or Command Option for Mac. And while you have this folder selected here, just click on this arrow. And this way I'm gonna close down all the folders. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start customizing this effect from the bottom. So the first layer that we got here is the background color layer. 
So when you double click here, you can choose any color for the background. The effect gonna work better with the darker colors. You can experiment here with any colors that you like. All right? And this layer also has the a gradient normal effect here. So when you double click there, what you can do is you can change the light source in the background. So you can change its intensity here. You can change its size or you can change its style here, the angle, you can make any changes that you like. I'm just gonna keep the default one. All right. And here what we got, it says place background photo here. So if you want to add photo in the background, what you should do is you double click on this layer and here in the newly opened window, you go to the file and choose place embedded. And I'll just select the background photo that you want to use. I'm gonna use this one here. So I'm gonna select the photo and choose place. And I'm just gonna transform it to cover the canvas. Just like that. And all you have to do now is to just press Ctrl S on your keyboard or Command S to save the changes and just close this file and the background photo will be automatically added here in the background. As you can see the blending mode of the photo is changed here so the photo is going to blend with the effect and what you can do here is you can double click on this layer and you can change here the blending of the photo with the effect. All right. I'm just going to use default settings just add a little bit of the details in the background and the next we got here is the background texture folder. So when you open this folder, you're gonna find three background texture layers here. The best thing to do when you're customizing the effect is to just turn off the layer and then turn it on and see how it affects the look and then customize it, all right? So each of these layers has the, the pattern overlay effect. So what you can do, you can double click on the pattern overlay effect here. You can click and drag to reveal some other part of the texture in a different area and what you can also do is you can change the opacity of the texture you can change the scale here if you like so you can make any changes and that's the case with all these texture layers uh, that the action creates all right and these settings should work with just about any photo these default settings but you can of course adjust them for a different look if you like all right I'm just going to use all default settings here. You can also drop down the opacity of the textures from here. If you just want to change the opacity, you don't have to go into the pattern overlay effect details. You can just drop down the opacity from here and you're going to drop it down. All right. And the next one we got here is the shadow layer. All right. So you can see it as the shadow behind the subject and the uniform. So as you can see this layer has a layer mask, so what you can do here is you can select this layer mask and using the move tool you shift click here and drag up to reveal the shadow effect uh, if you like, all right? So by default the shadow effect will be just visible here at the bottom. You can simply drag this layer mask and, and reveal it in the upper part of the uh, design. And what you can also do here is you can change the opacity of the shadow, all right? Next what we got here is the subject folder, all right? And you can see this layer here has a layer mask. So this layer mask is just gonna add some feather effect to the edges to better blend the subject with the effect. So if you shift click on this layer mask, you're gonna turn it off. And what we got here is the main subject layer. And this layer also has the effect, the gradient overlay. So when you double click there, this effect here, you're just gonna add a little bit of the shadow to the subject and it's gonna darken it a little bit. And what you can do here, you can change the opacity, if you like. And you can also change the scale or any other settings. And what I'd like to do here is to again, using the move tool, I just click here and drag to bring the shadow effect up if needed, just like that is okay and now we got these three layers here it's gonna help you to blend the subject better with the whole effect so the first layer we got is the subject saturation so you double click on the layer thumbnail and now here using the slider you can increase the or decrease the saturation of the subject so I just gonna increase it a little bit up just like that and the next we got is the subject brightness layer so when you double click here in the properties panel you'll find these five sliders 
to adjust the brightness of the subject. So how this works is that this slider here is gonna boost the shadows, this one here is gonna boost the highlights, this one here is gonna boost or fade the mid-tones, and this one here is gonna fade the shadows, this one here is gonna fade the highlights, right? So by default, the photo is going to be a little bit darkened, right? So I'm just gonna darken it just a, just a little bit. Something like that. All right. And the next we got is the subject color. So here you can change the shadows, midtones, and highlights uh, color to better blend the subject with the whole effect. So I'm just gonna adjust these using these sliders. What you can do here is you can drag a slider to the almost top left and top right and see which one uh, makes the subject blend better with the effect and then just add some more subtle adjustment. Alright, just like that. And lastly, just gonna adjust the highlights here. Alright. This layer is just gonna make the subject blend better with the whole effect. So I'm just gonna move to the next layer, and that is the uniform layer here. So when you open the uniform folder, you find there is another folder. So this layer mask here is just gonna make the uniform better blend with the effect by softening the edges and this layer mask here is just gonna make that the shadow effect here doesn't go out of this inside area here right so this is the main uniform layer and as you can see this layer also has the gradient overlay effect you can also click and drag to adjust the lighting of the uniform you can make any changes here like the scale angle opacity and everything so just gonna keep all default and what we got here are the two drop shadow effects, all right? So as you can see, the bottom one's just gonna add some subtle shadow. This one here is gonna add more sharper shadow here closer. And what you can do, you can double click on this effect and you can adjust the shadow effect however you like. So you can increase the size here and you can adjust the opacity. And as you can see, there are two shadow effects. So you can just play with these to adjust as you like. And here we got the two uniform texture layers, so both textures are only applied to the uniform only. And the same as with the background textures, you can open the pattern overlay effect to these layers and here you can change the opacity, you can change the scale and other settings of the textures that are applied to the uh, uniform, right? And you can also change their opacity from here. All right. And next what we got are the overlay textures. So here there are five textures. You can turn them all off and just start turning them all one by one to see how they affect the look. All right. And then if you wish to adjust any of these, you simply open their pattern overlay effect and now just here the opacity and scale. You can also play with the blending mode. All right. And what we got here is the color tint. So when you double click here, you can change the tint of the whole effect. You can use the same saturation and brightness settings and just change the hue here by dragging this slider, just like that, all right? Or you can use any other color that you like. I'm gonna use the default settings here as well. And here we got the darkening layer. So as you can see what this layer does, it's gonna add the darkening effect around the subject. All right. And what you can do here is you can change the opacity of this layer. All right. Or you can double click here. You can play with the scale. Just like that. And next what we got is the overall contrast. 
So how you adjust the contrast is you just change the opacity here. So you're just gonna click on the word opacity and drag it aside, just like that. So you're just gonna add a little bit of the contrast, something like that. And next we got the overall brightness layer. So this layer works the same as the subject brightness layer over here. All right, and it already has some preset settings. All right, I'm just gonna keep them default. So if you want, you can customize them. You can customize this layer the same as we did for this layer. So you got the same five sliders. And lastly, we got the oral vibrance and saturation layer. So you double click here and now you can adjust the both vibrance and the saturation of the effect. All right. And what I want to do now is after I have finished with customizing the effect, I want to crop down the image, All right? So you're just gonna press C on my keyboard to select the crop tool and you can just, just gonna crop it a little bit over here and a little bit over here, just like that. Just gonna click on the check icon. All right. And you can see the effect gonna look much better. Maybe a little bit here at the top, just like that. All right. So that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. It's better that you have more space and then you easily crop down the image later, just like that. All right, so here is our result. And what I want to do now is just go back to the uniform layer and show you how can you customize uh, the uniform here. So you select the uniform layer and you double click on this layer thumbnail And here this newly open window what you're gonna find is the uniform folder and when you open this folder You're gonna find over 20 uniform layers here So the uniform as I can mentioned at the beginning of the video is fully layered and what you can do is you can change the color of any part here So these are the default colors. So you can just select the layer that you wish uh, to uh, paint in different color and double click here and just choose any color that you like All right, so you can just go through these layers and change the color of any layer that you like All right, you can turn on and off these color layers to see Which layer uh, affects uh, the color field that you selected All right So in this case what I want to do is I just want to change the color this part here, so just gonna change it to white, just like that. All right. And what you're also gonna find here is the uniform reflection and shadow layers. So these layers are gonna pop out the details of the uniform. You can play with the opacity here if you like, or you can just keep it default. And what else you're gonna find here is the design folder. All right. So when you open the design folder, you're gonna find the layer here. It says your design goes here. Double click layer thumbnail. So when you double click here. You can here add any design that you like and when you save the changes the design will be automatically added here to the metal all right so i'm just going to use some pattern that they made which is going to fill this with the pattern here it is going to choose okay so after you place your design here you go to file place embedded the same as we added the background photo and you place your design you press ctrl s to save go back to the uniform file and you're going to find the design added here and then you press ctrl save again and now close this file and you're gonna find all the changes applied here all right so now you can save this result as it is or what you can also do is you can add the painting effect so i'm just gonna go back to the actions panel i'm gonna select the painting action and this action won't stop with any messages so you can just select the action and click play so i'm going to fasten the video here and i'm going to get back as soon as the action is finished and then I'm going to show you how to customize the painting effect. All right, so the action has just finished, so I'm just going to close the folder and I'm going to close the asset panel for now. So now you got these uh, painting folder here at the top of the layers. So if you wish to remove the painting effect, you simply hide this folder. And when you open it, what we got here, the first layer is the painting layer. This gives the painting effect and this layer has the opacity set to 50%. So with this opacity of this layer, you can control the amount of the painting effect. If you want it more subtle, you can just drop it down. Or if you want um, more heavy painting effect, you can just increase it up. So I'm just going to use the default one, just like that. And what you can do here is you can select the layer mask of this layer. You can choose the brush tool, like a salt brush, set program color to black, and you simply brush over any areas that you wish. Uh, 
to remove the painting effect and increase the clarity of these areas, alright? And the next we got are the shadows and highlights layers, alright? So these layers are gonna add some dark painting details to the effect and what you can do here is you can change the opacity of this layer. Okay, and here we got the opposite layer. This one here is gonna add some highlights so you can change its opacity here as well. All right. You can also double click on these layers and expand or narrow the area that they are affecting by moving the slider here, All right? Same with the shadows layer. And the next we got is the reveal details layer. So when you turn it off and on, you're gonna see it's gonna reveal some small details in the photo. What you can do here, again, you can change the opacity, All right? And we got a painting textures. So these two layers work the same as all texture layers that we had here in the dog general folder. So you double click there, you choose the pattern overlay effect and you can then make any changes like the opacity or scale. Okay, and you can also change their opacity from here. So zoom in here so you can see the details. All right. And here we got the color look layer. So what this layer does, it's gonna add the color to the whole effect. And what you can do here is you can double click on this layer thumbnail, you can open the gradient here, and using this randomized button, you can just change the color. So you can just click this button until you find the color that's gonna work best with your photo, all right? And if you come to any color look that you like, you can simply click here new to save it, and you can keep looking for another one, and then you can always get back to the one you saved here, all right? So I said this one earlier, so just gonna select that one. Okay, and it's just gonna choose okay here. So, and what you can do then is just change the opacity here. All right, so just gonna add a subtle color here. Usually the lower value is gonna work best, but you can experiment with this, all right? And lastly, what we got here is the overall sharpening layer. So this layer is gonna give the sharpening to the whole effect. And if you made any changes here, what you need to do is to update this layer. So how to do that is you just run the update sharpening action all right and you actually update the sharpening layer so you can then just control the sharpening by changing the opacity here we're gonna leave it 100 percent and if you want to get back here and make any changes to the dog general folder uh, what you need to do is if you want to update the painting effect so you have that changes applied before the painting is applied here you can just run the update painting action, all right? So this action is gonna remove this painting effect and gonna create a new one using different settings, all right? Considering that the opacity of this layer is dropped after you make any changes here, the changes will be visible still, but if, for example, change the color of the uniform or make some more drastic changes, you may want to update the painting effect so that the painting is created from the new look that you have made, all right? So in that case, you just run the update painting action. Okay, so let's just quickly check the before and after. So here is our before and here is the after. All right, so I hope you understood everything, but if you still need any help or you got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Envato profile page. Thanks for watching.